Hi everyone. So I have decided to make this um, spontaneous decision uh, to make a video. I wasn't planning to, to do this. I was just going to write, but I think it's time for the voice to go on the writing and it's a completely out of my comfort zone because I never make videos either. However, today, the 27th of September, I have just gone to pick up That's Life magazine. And that's me. That's me there on the front page. I'm speaking out. Um, a video seems deserving. So here it is. Uh, a magazine story, a decision that I didn't think I would ever have to make and it's not been easy. But for my own personal and professional reasons, I had to make it. And this journey has to be revealed. Some people need to be accountable um, because justice has never prevailed. I grew up silenced by fear of my father committing suicide. And in 2011, when he was arrested, the first thing I said when I received that phone call is, why are you trying to destroy my life now? Why, why? Why now? It's too late. He will kill himself and I was still groomed, you see. I was still controlled. I was still silenced. I was still terrified that something was going to happen to him. So with the 10-year sentence, I never thought he would survive that. Only in May 2018, he walked free. So here I am. Let me introduce Kelly Meftahi. Kelly Colby, as most of you will probably know me from back home. The silenced soul. The secret that was her. And that magazine story can never tell it all. And maybe I still have a long way to go until I can. But as that release date lingered, this instinct came to Google his name. I knew he was coming up for release. I'd been informed. He had not been granted um, parole on numerous occasions. And for some bizarre reason, I decided to Google his name. What did I see when I Googled his name in March 2018? A nice news article by The Inquirer with a headline saying, update, Chelmsford prisoner found on fire who died by accident. As my heart dropped, stopped, oh my God, he did it. He did it. He actually killed himself. He's dead. No. It was an inmate who was in his cell. And as I slowly tried to read the article, now I was becoming really confused. Why was his name, when I've got anonymity, in Google, on the Inquirer? Open quote. Giving evidence, Edward Colby, a serving prisoner, who was also a listener trained by Samaritans within Chelmsford Prison, said Mr Quigley told him the night before the incident, I won't be here tomorrow. And the days are going, the dogs are going to get me. As my brain tried to process what I was reading, my father, sentenced to 10 years in prison, was a listener trained by Samaritans in Chelmsford Prison. The rage then surged through me. Lifelong anonymity, protection from the judge, and a sentence. My shaking body, how was he so public? How did he still have that power? A listener trained by Samaritans. I'm the counsellor. I'm the advocate for violence against women. I listen and I support victims. I. So on that day, in March 2018, Six months ago, I decided to break my silence. I've decided to take back my control. Because he walks after serving six and a half years of a 10-year sentence. 
while still holding his power as he did back then. And now I do this with a scared but a hidden strength because everyday survivors like me still remain silenced. Yet we are influential voices and we should be the role models for systematic change. I'm not terrified now of the stigma and the shame and the hiding that I've done in silence. The same silence that voided me of a childhood and a life. Normalising survivors of child sexual abuse so we can educate children, professionals and community alike. Survivors of sexual abuse are the change. They are the voice. So if you want to pick up that magazine today on page 42 and read some of the journey, I'll see if I can grab the page right now because I haven't actually read the story as it is myself yet. Here's the first page and here's the second page. And anyone who knows me now, sorry my hands are a bit shaky, this is me. On page 42 it says, I was easy prey, like a lamb to slaughter. I'm going to leave that and that will be the upcoming video once I've had time to process and to read. So what I'm going to say to you to finalise this video is just don't look at me and just see my strengths because you honestly, honestly do not know what I struggle with daily. And don't look at me and judge, don't victim blame, because you don't know what path I've had to walk to survive. Like the innocent child that I was, you need to stand with me now. This is where I need you and I've never asked you for anything. Because I need you to know that if I can, then you can. And this is my power. I am speaking out to break the silence of the silencers. And it is never, ever too late. This is the reason why I fight my demons every single day. To help other women. Yes, as people, many people know, I'm not doing it funded. I do it for free. I work very hard. I have an organisation because it's my passion. I live the effects of trauma every day. But my story is not just for me. It's not just for my healing and it's not just for my power. This is for every woman that I hope today picks up that magazine, reads that, and you reach out and you speak out and you join me on my national campaign, hashtag, if she can, I can. So we, the survivors, can undertake this mission for systematic law change eradication of sexual abuse and better protection for victims and this needs only the survivor's voice how do we get into schools how do we speak out on such a higher level how do we change the survivor's story how do we get better justice how do we stop these inhumane people who cannot be re rehabilitated from destroying us because believe me it never ever leaves us how do we the survivor make a change so please join me on my campaign to at least make a, a small step and a start because i'm not stopping from today it starts with that's life magazine it goes into another magazine and we take it from there because i have a voice i am not what you did to me I am the identity of my survival because I am me. I am Mayameen Meftahi, the survivor, the founder of She Can Consultancy, specialised in violence against women and psychological trauma. I am Mayameen, that's my new name that I changed. And what does it mean? The blessed, the brave. Thank you.